How you doing? This is Kevin, W6RP, 11 Day Scrape. Um, gonna do a reloading series. So some of you might have seen my video that I did uh, a couple years ago <laughs> on uh, the items that you need to reload because uh, it's not it's not the cheap way to go for sure. It's the more efficient way to go, and it's, uh, it's the funner way to go, and um, it's a lot more rewarding to when uh, you reload your own ammo. So uh, accuracy lies in your reloads. Um, so to start off, I am just gonna, you know, basically say by this point maybe you have already bought some good brass. Um, you always want to, you know, size it, load it, fire form it. Um, and once you get that fire forming out of the way, then you can bring it back to the bench and actually start your case prep. Uh, and this is what I do. So. I um, once you fire form it, then you just go into a neck sizing. I, I use a Lee neck sizing uh, call it neck sizing die uh, because it squeezes the neck. You don't ram it up and then yank it down. Um, I like this one because it actually squeezes the neck. Um, they don't make this for all cartridges, all calibers. Um, I know I couldn't find one for my Lapua. So I'd have to have one probably made, um, but I picked up a Redding, and it's just, you know, out of the two ways, I prefer this one uh, for, you know, complete accuracy. Um, but I'm just going to go over on, on how to set up the die and, you know, get the, brace, the cases going. Okay, so what I do to set up the collet neck sizer is I put the ram up, and I screw this in all the way until it touches the ram and then I lower the ram and do it one more full turn so with your hand you're about two half turns boom turn it boom turn it and you go up now you cannot push the ram down all the way it will not fully extend up um, and this is what you want you don't want it to do that um, <clears throat> different sizers the other kind of sizers will make it to where this will camber over and um, and then you know you full you know si full length size the neck and um, or full length size the, the brass but this this call it sizer is to the ram down one full turn maybe even two it says one to two full turns I usually just do one and then uh, you're good to go you just don't want to over press the press because this die is damaging put it in decap and pressure. That's it. So you want to apply the same amount of pressure on each case. Decap. Pressure. The amount of pressure that you put on is going to just, you know, distinguish how tight that neck is going to be. Um, you know, you want two thousandths the neck tension and the pressure that I put on this in the past it's always been about that so <clears throat> give me one thousandths two thousandths anywhere in between as long as you just in your mind and in your feel that you do the same thing on every one that's the ticket I don't know if you can notice this <clears throat> well, maybe I can do it in slow motion figure out how to do that but you decap and then right here is about where it's gonna grab and then it goes a little bit more. Let me get my hand out of the way for that one, for this next one. Okay. So you'll see where it start where you're putting that amount of pressure on it. So there it is, now I'm in it. And then it goes just a little bit. I don't know, you might be putting ten pounds, fifteen pounds of pressure on it. Sure, exactly. But uh, let's do the same on each one. So I'm doing batches of 20. Uh, right now we're doing a 7 millimeter rim mag. Um, I really like this cartridge. This is my first uh, high powered. Cartridge. Uh, my first cartridge I ever bought was a 223, 
had a lot of fun with that. Uh, you know, extending that is pretty far, over 1,600 yards. And that was a blast. I've got this. And I've since shot my, uh, I have a Savage and a Remington Sendero 7mm. My Savage, I've uh, shot a mile so far. But now I picked up my Remington Sendero, a very accurate firearm for being factory. And um, <clears throat> now we're going to do some nice reloads for this one and uh, see how we see how we do um, so that's the first step okay now the next thing we're gonna do is neck turn and um, the next step is neck turning because we want to do that before we trim the cases because when we trim the cases it's gonna leave a nice big nasty burr on the top edge and um, we'd have to chamfer and deburr it first before we could uh, neck turn it. It's a very, very fine machine, um, what we're going to do. So we're going to neck turn first, and this is one of the, the steps that really made a difference, a huge difference, in, um, in the reloads that I do. Anyways, uh, don't mind the, the phone here. This is so I can watch and make sure that uh, whatever I'm doing is in camera view so you can see it. So what I do is um, I put each, like not each piece of brass, I'll probably grab like you know, four or five pieces of brass and um, basically I look at this and I find out, I squeeze it down and find out where I'm at. So right here, I don't, if you can see there's a 10 and 11 and it's just above the 11. Okay, then I turn about another quarter turn, check it again, I'm at like 11 and a half. Uh, loosen it, turn it, uh, about 12, and 12, and 11 and a half. So, it's like 11 and a half is about as thinnest point on the neck so far on that one. So here we are at 11 again. So now 11 seems like it's the uh, going to be the thinnest point on these. There's a, about 11. Check it, 11 and a half. Eleven and a half, uh, a little, a little more than eleven. So what we want to do is we want to find the thinnest point, and that's where we're going to turn it to. We're going to turn it to its thir thinnest point on all twenty pieces of brass. We're going to do these in bunches because everything's going to be consistent in each bunch of twenty. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we're looking for. So here we got uh, eleven and a half. A little more than 11, a little more than 11, 12, a little less than 12, a little more than 11, 12, 12, okay. I'm just doing like, you know, eighth turn, quarter turns. So, obviously you can squeeze the hell out of this thing too and make it go even more, but we're not doing that. I'm just doing a nice easy turn to where it stops. See now how we're at 11 again on this one. Um, loosen it, turn it, um, 11 and a half, 11 and a half, 12, 12, 12, 11 and a half, just a little, you know, just a little above 11. Eleven and a half. And there's a 12, or no, that was an 11, excuse me. 12, a little more than 11, 11 point something. Wow, oh, that, look at this, this is 12, that was almost a little more than 12. So these are normal cases, and uh, look here we're at 11 again. So this is what we're going to go down to is 11. I have not over, you know, these six pieces of brass have found anything thinner than an 11. Okay, so what we're going to do is 
get down to 11 right here. We're not going to touch this. Okay, we're going to leave this where it, as it is. Um, so we'll put that right at 11. I'm going to do it just slightly above 11, just to be safe. I don't want to go too thin on the whole thing, and you'll see when we do this, there'll be some patches that are left behind of the old color of brass. Um, that's going to be the thinnest spot, and then uh, everything else will be shaved off. What I do is I just grab my drill with my um, this with my um, came with my Lee trimmer die. trimmer stuff in here um, so this is the lead trimmer I really like this thing uh, it's very consistent so I just take the holder for that put the piece of brass in and we want to get a little tub to catch the shavings and we're just gonna go ever so slowly Just go down to the end of the neck, and then we work our way back. Okay, so now you can see how nice and clean and shiny that is. And see right here, there's some spots that uh, were not shaved. That's its flattest point. So we got most of that, all that one. Put this one aside and get a new one. Okay, and just do it again. So it's grabbing, taking most of it, but it's leaving that little patch. As you see, there's a lot of these have that just that real thin spot. I mean, for the most part, these are pretty consistent at a, you know, I'm just using my my neck turner as a, you know, right around the 11 and a half mark. Uh, a lot of them were, but then there's a few that got down to 11, so that's why we're shaving them all to 11. And slowly go down. It'll stop right at the neck. This trimmer has a, a rounded edge down there, so it won't go any further. But, but, you know, sometimes you can go, you can even go an extra time. You know, barely shaving anything off, but you're just getting some remnants of what you left last time. Okay, that one. If you want. There you, go. you don't want to go too crazy. But when you're doing a lot of pieces of brass, sometimes you can speed up the process just a tad.
All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to run this brass again through the collet neck sizer. Not much is going to change. Now we're just ensuring everything is going to stay straight and in alignment. Just put a little bit of pressure on each one. Okay, now we're gonna trim the brass. Um, I really like the lead trimmer because it's consistent every time. If you can see, that goes right through the primer pocket, it goes right up, everything's exactly set to spec for the seven millimeter rim mag. I have these for all the cartridges I do, 300 Weatherby, um, 300 Blackout, 223, um, 264 Win Mag, Lapua, everything. I, I just buy one of these for every single cartridge I reload for because it's easier getting the spinner thing and you know I picked up these guys. You know these are cool at first. Um, I did it for seven millimeter and then uh, the 223 but it, trim, it trims off the, off the uh, shoulder and I don't know it just kind of didn't work out after you when you're going to go and just do neck sizing for precision reloads I mean that's not it I mean these would be great for just you know trying to bust through them real fast and uh, especially 223 I you know just doing a lot of reloads uh, it's cool but not for what we're doing here so anyways what I do is just grab a case and just get it going and put this in. And do that. That's it. Done. That one did not even budge. Okay, so these are um, Norma's, so they're very good specs to begin with from the factory. So this one's grabbing a little bit. See that? Okay, you guys heard that. So uh, that's why you got to do every single one because they're all going to expand just a little bit differently. This one's grabbing a little bit. And you can feel it with your left hand. You can feel it gripping. You feel the grinding. And, um, yeah, and obviously you just go until you stop feeling anything because you know it's been trimmed enough. Nothing. That one wasn't even. That was perfect. So now we're going to run through the case presentation. Um, I cleaned this all off so you can get a better idea on um, what's going to happen with uh, when, especially when we're uh,
trimming the flash holes and um, deeper in the flash holes you'll notice that and at the very end of these 20 pieces of brass that are Norma very nice spec um, high quality brass you'll know what we're going to be trimming off a little bit on the inside so first things first <clears throat> I have this set up for Lapua so I need to get this guy fixed and all my allen wrenches around here so basically we're going to loosen that to where it kind of goes up and down and throw in our brass in here I'm going to feed that little trimmer up through the flash hole like that and then we're going to tighten down once it's up there we're going to squeeze these together <clears throat> and that's where we're going to trim it and tighten it down to alright so that's locked in this is going to go down you'll see this turn through here I know you can see that and then we'll be trimming the inside of deburn the flash holes seconds. Hit it on there. Chain for deburr. And I clean this primer pocket. Um, I went with the Hornady primer pocket cleaner. The, um, the one that came with this Lyman set just didn't seem like it was doing a good job. I had to hold it there for a little while. It was kind of lame. So I read some reviews on this Hornady one. Same thing rocks speeds up the process. And this is just the uniformer, primer from pocket uniforming tool. These are all pretty uniform because they're Norma. Lapua, Norma, and Nosler. Are probably going to be your top three types of brass that are, you know, ready to go. I don't need too much work on them. That's why you buy them. You buy, you know, get what you pay for. So, pretty clean. Just run in there for a minute. So that one grip in a little bit.
right, so we got all our brass prep. Now, next step is um, I'm going to measure for overall case length, better known as uh, case length, you know, based to ogive, case case based to ogive, CBOT or CBTO, CBTO, case based to ogive. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, Hornady overall length gauge. And um, we can use this with this bullet comparator dealio. Um, it's all part of the same kit. And this will measure the bullet to the ogive. Okay, so make sure you got the right one. This one is the uh, it says 7-28, so 7 millimeter or 280, you know, 280 millimeter. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. All right, uh, the next step, now that we have all of our brass nice and prepped, cleaned, nick turned, size, trimmed, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find our overall case length um, or case base to ogive so CBOT CBTO case base to ogive um, we're gonna use the lock and load straight overall case gauge and um, that's this unit right here and it <clears throat> comes with this guy right here that measures the ogive um, make sure these all have different setting you know they're different sizes for uh, 22 caliber uh, this one right here is 28 because uh, we're doing a seven millimeter and what we use is these guys right here it's a um, the Hornady uh, modified case so this guy you know lets a bullet fit right down on the inside and this is adjustable so we put it up kind of where it's kind of low tighten it and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this into the action and press it out until it hits the lands so that's what we're gonna do uh, these are burger VLDs so these <clears throat> these bullets traditionally like to be right up in there in the lands <coughs> so what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna go about uh, 10 eh, I don't know we're testing right now so maybe we'll do like 30 thousandths off it's a new rifle. I don't want to jam anything in that. So um, we'll probably go about 30 thousandths off the lands. That should be a good start. And then from there, we'll uh, see how the groups do and maybe move it up to about 10 thousandths off the lands. Um, but 30 thousandths is a good safe uh, step. So we're not going to deal with any kind of major overpressuring issues or anything like that. Uh, I'm not going to load the rounds real hot. I'm going to do them about half grain increments. Um, yeah, I might, I might go down to uh, 0 0.3 this time, uh, 0 0.3 grain increments, and um, see how we do. But the 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 key is just being consistent, being ultra consistent on everything across the board. So next step is you get a rifle. You're going to. Take the bolt out, which I already did, and <clears throat> going to get that up in there. Going to loosen it. First, what I do is I push this guy all the way in, the red part, and then I push this guy. See, now we're right up in it. And what I'm going to do is tighten it and take it out. So the bullet is a new rifle got stuck in there so sometimes what you got to do is <laughs> give it a little give the rifle a little love tap on the ground so it'll uh, the bullet will fall out of the lance and um, then from there <clears throat> what I do is get my calipers put this guy back in there that's that's our what we're looking at right now I'll do this about three times and I'll uh, and check the measurements so uh, you guys if go on Amazon and, and get one of these if you don't have a, a really nice 
caliper right now. Uh, those Frankfurt Arsenals and some of the other reloading ones just aren't, they just don't cut it. Uh, I really, really like this one. If you watch my other video on different, on the, on the gear to get, uh, this is the ticket. It's called the Origin Cow. Origin Cow. So, here we just go down like this. And we got 2.756. Let's measure it again. 2.757. 2.757. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit too hard. You don't want to squeeze it too hard. just want to get it on there. So, we're going to write down 2.75. Seven. All right. Let's take it back out. Let's start over again. Bring this down a little bit. Tighten it up. <clears throat> the rifle. This in the action. Get the action. Get this all the way up in the action. Then push this. Okay, okay, kind of tight. Tighten it down, bring it out, and then we'll measure. So I like to make sure this bottom part is flat with my left hand. Okay, we're at 2.758. 2.757 again. 2.757. So that that's it. I'm, I'm good. Two. I was gonna do it three times, but since the first two, two out of three, already made it. You know, you're looking at uh, 2.757 again. So if this, if you twist this one way or another, if this is not perfectly straight, it's gonna give you a little bit different reading. So just do your best to level it up perfectly with your left hand and get it directly in line with this guy. So um, so we're good. <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll, we'll add 30 thousandths to that <coughs> and that's what we're gonna plug into here and to get our die set up. So and I like doing this and getting all the numbers down before I start to charge everything. Um, you know, then we'll we'll worry about charging since we'll, we'll already have this set up. We'll charge it. So what I like to do is uh, charge the case, then seat it. Charge the case, then seat it all together. Um, I don't like charging all the cases and then seat them again because I like to do it one one full step at a time. Charge the case, seat it, and I write down on it what what um, powder charge it is. And we'll do we'll do about. Um, three or five of each. We'll probably do about three of each. Um, we're just starting right now. Uh, we'll do about three of each powder charge and um, then we'll go out and test it. Yeah, you know, I've, I've done five before, but it seems like three is enough. Um, you get a pretty good, pretty good baseline on that. I'm not shooting competition. I'm just out there having fun. Um, I like to see how good I can get it without being too overcritical of things um, so I've had some success doing it that way and I'm just going to continue doing it that the way uh, you can spend you know all day a whole box of ammo trying to find your perfect load and all you do is you shoot a hundred rounds you found your perfect load now your barrel harmonics are off because your powdered your powder fouling and copper equilibrium in the barrel are different now and you get to start all over so I don't like getting too nuts over it. It, it gets pretty draining. Um, if you're doing competition stuff and you have all the time in the world, you're retired, cool. But you know what, I don't. Um, so that's why I like to do is just three rounds, get a good baseline, go out, see which ones have the best, you know, standard deviation with the best group. You know, I, I take two things into consideration. I might not get the best group, but I'm looking for that best standard deviation and then the next step is the best group. So uh, that's what we're, what we're going. Okay, next step is priming. <clears throat> we're gonna take our 
and brass. Everything's clean, nice, perfect. Now we're going to um, prime our brass. And I, uh, I use the RCBS hand primer. It does a good job for me. Um, I heard there's some good ones out there too, but I bought this with my first kit with my rock trucker and I haven't had a problem. So <clears throat> one of the tips with this is when you want to change the uh, the shell holder is to not let when you take this piece off don't let this fling all the way open because it's gonna mess this thing up down here you're gonna have to take it apart you have to fit this back in there you have to get the piece back in it's it's kind of a pain in the butt so what I do is I, I go about halfway you know maybe a quarter of the way open this up you gotta pull this out okay then I slide this out while I'm holding it, I'm still holding it exactly in the same spot. Slide this in <coughs> and uh, put it all back together. That way it doesn't fall apart on me. And I have to waste time trying to put it back together. Okay, so now here we are. Throw this guy back in there. Another thing with these, um, if you're just starting out, there's a flat side and a rounded side. Okay, I did this when I was first starting out. I put the flat part down and I did the rounded side and I just uh, rounded off the uh, the primer. <laughs> so, learn real quick. So, and this is, uh, the rounded side fits into the little pocket of the tube down there. Boom. So, and then <clears throat> this guy, what I like to do is I just take the primers and I go about I just take out the 20 that I need. I'm just doing 20 rounds. I do batches of 20. Put that in. Give it a little shake. Make sure they're all facing up, which they are. And I'll just take this guy, I'll slide it down first on the open side. I'll line that up. Then I'll line up this guy with the hole. And then I'll just snap it down. Okay. If you, if you try to snap it down without lining everything up, these things start flipping on you on si their sides and then you got to pull it all apart and start all over again. <coughs> yeah. Alright, so throw that guy in there. And then close that up. We don't need these right now. Close those up. And what we'll do is we'll just do a little shake. I like this. I like being able to feel the primer going in um, you can get you know the good brass you can get a, quite a few loadings out of it four or five um, I'll probably go like three or four or five we'll you know we'll see three four or five and uh, we'll anneal it and um, you can anneal it and reuse the brass as long as these primer pockets don't get blown out so that's why it's really really not good to over pressure the brass because if you blow up the primer pocket and this thing, you know, fits in there like like a wet noodle. Your your brass is done. Um, you can chuck it in the trash. So it's better to stay down. You know, if you want your brass to last, you want to stay down in the lower pressure zones, um, lower lower powder charges, because you know in the end it's just going to cost you more money. Um, you're not going to get more range out of a you know faster speed. You're not going to get that much more range if you're doing it right. And you have the right bullet, and you have the right st st uh, stabilization factor. Um, you, you're still going to shoot really far, and the little bit of extra speed that you get from over from you know running a higher powder charge is not going to overcompensate for, or it's not going to compensate for your wind read or anything like that. So it's not going to make you hit anything any further. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> So these are pretty tight going in. They're brand new. That's perfect. Okay, I, I just run my finger on it, make sure it's flat. Okay. <coughs> yeah, give it a little shake. Boom.
Sometimes they're so tight. See right there, that one was a super tight one. I can tell it didn't go in all the way. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a squeeze. Now it's flat. <clears throat> so and these have already been fire formed once. Um, you always start with that, you fire form it, size it, fire form it, then you go in and do all your, uh, your sharp things, making it all perfect. four or five firings and you start to notice these primer pockets getting uh, real loose you're gonna want to take that one and put it aside mark it keep it away from the rest of them you can still you know use it to warm up your barrel but um, it's not gonna be your you know, extreme long range target one yeah all right so that's it Boom, boom. Cool. All right, so now, next step, um, we'll be charging the cases. So first thing we need to do is find a powder charge. Um, we're gonna do this in real time. I didn't look at a bunch of stuff and analyze it. I'm just gonna go off my thought process in the moment and, um, <clears throat> and figure it out. So I like to Usually you just have like two forms of reference. Um, one of the reloading manuals I'm really liking right now is this Modern Reloading Richard Lee. Uh, second edition, this is a new one that just came out, revised in 2016. Um, I got other <laughs> old shelf of reloading manuals up at the top. They're not a whole shelf, I got about six of them, but um, they're all old, you know, 2015, 2014. Um, you know, Barnes hasn't renewed one for a good four or five years. Um, the Burger one, I think they're still in volume one. So this is up to date. And there's, and the thing is, is that the reason I like this one is it's not, um, you know, it's not like Sierra is doing specifically for Sierra bullets. It's not Burger's doing specifically with Burger's, Barnes for Barnes. This is kind of like, this takes in a lot of different accounts for a wide variety range of bullets um, <clears throat> so I already have it opened up to the seven millimeter um, Ren mag right here is a 180 grain jacket of bullet the powder I really like to use is the H4831 uh, for the seven millimeter I've had a lot of success with that and uh, really standard really low standard deviations in that powder it's not very sensitive to um, temperature so it's that's a good powder and it, you can use it for a, a lot of different rounds um different cartridges and stuff so and basically all the bullet sizes and everything that we're going to be shooting with the seven millimeter we can use that too um so here we go uh h40 831 we're looking at 58.6 to 64 so we'll just call it 59 to 64, well 64 and a half being the max. Um, <clears throat> so 59, 64. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick right around in probably the 61 range with that. I like to go, you know, not the low, not the high, right in the middle. Um, okay, okay, space to O jive, and then. Uh, it's going to be grains, powder charge, and <clears throat> so we'll look at that. Okay, now we'll match it up to, I like to look at the Hodgson website since I'm using their powder. So, grab the phone. Okay, Google. Hodgson reloading manual. Reloading data center. Full. Add 
cartridge. Oh, we don't need to add a cartridge yet. Uh, seven millimeter rim mag. Ooh, six point five by forty seven Lapua. That's my custom rifle my I haven't built right now. <laughs> it's been it's been it's been about a year and a half since it's been at the shop. <clears throat> but uh it should be done soon. Seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Okay. Bullet weight. We'll go with the 180s. 180, man. Alright, we go with the Hodgdon and 4831. Get data. Alright, so they're saying exactly the same thing. So it, there's a good chance that this reloading manual got their information. <laughs> they had to, they got it from Hodgdon. So um, it's the same thing. So I know we're right in the wheelhouse. Um, we'll probably go. 61 you guys can see that can't open it up anymore but anyways um, so if I go 61 and I'm gonna do three each what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three I'm gonna do five different increments um, then we'll have another five just to um, take a wild guess and play around with and then that way I keep all the firings in the same the same vicinity um, you know same amount of firings anyways I'll probably start with I'll pro we'll probably go 60.5 no I'll probably go 60 60.5 um, 61 61.5 62 one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go sixty to sixty-two in half grain increments. And um <clears throat> we'll see which one of these has the best right now what we're basically searching for is the powder burn rate. Um loading our rifle at this length, what's gonna burn the cleanest? What's gonna have the best burn? Um and that's gonna give us our standard deviation. Um be better set up like that and then from there then we'll see if we have any decent groups and if we you know when we analyze the groups with the with the um, standard deviations maybe we'll do another step and break it down into you know two you know point two grain increments point three grain increments um, if we're off by a tenth of a grain it's not that big of a deal um, the biggest deal is having everything consistent. That's going to have a bigger factor on your standard deviation than one tenth of a grain on any of these. And I'm going to keep it perfect, you know, for that for that reason. But um, just for testing purposes. But if I happen to load, you know, one of these at 60.1, it's not going to be a big deal. Or 59.9, not going to be a big deal. Um, Sometimes it's cool when you test, you know, when you're doing your reloading and you like to see the same elevation on your on your group. So this one might group up here, this one might group down here, this one might group right here, this one might group right here, and this one might group back up here. So what you're going to want is something right in this range you know since your elevation is the same and then you know if you're off by a tenth of a grain right in there it's not gonna be a big deal because your little group your little one inch group at you know 1500 yards it don't mean shit when you can't read your wind so uh, if you get really tight groups and you're really good at reading your wind then then this will matter but um, reading your wind is way more important than worrying about how tight your group is so a, another good thing to do is to be in this range so like say for instance we go out there and we shoot and we're right in like right in this range is is our groups are about the same elevation if you load it up at 61.2 or 61.4 
<clears throat> but your groups, your elevations are like the same, it's not gonna hurt anything when you're, you know, kind of quick loading. Um, you know, I never, this, my powder thrower right here, this Lyman, I really, really like it because it's never off by more than one tenth of a grain. Um, and if I, if it's, and it usually what it does is stops just below. So if I'm loading up, you know, 60 grains, it might stop at 59.5 or 59.9. And all I have to do is trickle in another one or two granules and boom, I'm right on target. So you'll see that as I'm using this powder charger that I'm re I really like it. So with that, we're going to pause this for a minute and then we'll start on that guy. Alright, so now we are going to charge our cases and charging seat. So, get these guys in there. Hopefully that's enough powder in there for this group of 20. Um, I'm guessing it will be. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is just make sure this is set at zero. It is. Zero it. Um, I pulled the plug on it, let it recalibrate, and um, we should be good to go. So our first one is going to be 60. 60 grains. And we're going to hit enter. And start trickling. Uh, get auto repeat. You know, and then um, that way when I pour it and place the uh, little deal back on the scale, it'll start charging now, you know, start cranking out grains for another one. So let's see. 60. Boom. 60. I'm sure you guys can see that. It's perfect. Um, what I'll do is if it gets down to like 50, you know, um, <clears throat> 59 Point nine. I'll just take one of these little ice pick deals and just go pink pink and drop a couple more in there until they're good. Take this stuff away. And so uh, this is a redding. Make sure your all your granules get down in there uh, before you pull the funnel off. So this is a redding funnel. Fits perfect on most cartridges. I really like it. Um, <clears throat> not big enough for the 338 Lapua though. You guys can see that. So the 338 Lapua, I'm sure they make a bigger one of these, but I can go right back to my RCBS one that came with my kit and it works good for the 338 Lapua. But, but seven millimeter on down, even my 300 um, Weatherbees, this, this funnel's perfect. So see there's that next one, went to 559.9. I usually just tap this in there, drop a couple more, come on, get down. And if I think that it should have went to 60 and it didn't, I'll, I'll move this, let it reset, okay, Need another couple, oh, there it is, it's at 60, so done. All right, so we're gonna leave that for a minute. We're gonna come over here to this guy um, and get our measuring device. Pop up in these rounds, bullets, and move this on to the next one. So what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> well, first, first things first. I had this set, but I wanted to. I redid it because I wanted to show you how to set it. So we're using the Forrester um, competition seating die. I like this one. Uh, the Redding also makes a very good one, but I went the Forrester's about 70, 79 bucks where the Reddings are 130 or something like that. So it's been working really, really well for me. Um, I have the Forrester seating die for 223, seven millimeter, 300 wind mag, or not wind mag, 300 Weatherby and those are like my main my main ones that I'm loading for. Oh, I got a 6.5 Grendel um, 
yeah, but anyways, uh, I had, they were out of stock on this for a long time for the 338 Lapua, so I went with the Redding on that one just to get it. So, so I started doing my stuff. Not going to wait for out of stock BS, you know, sometimes you just got to get what you can get and uh, make the best with it. So, um, what you do with this is you put the ram up and you want this thing, you want this guy to go up all the way, okay? So you can see that. Um, so we're going to crank it down until it goes up. See, right, right here, and now I know I'm starting to hit it. So what I do is I bring it out to about right here. I want these things facing me. So let me adjust that. Take the camera. Okay, I want these guys facing me. So I take it down as far as I can go, lock it down, and then you know you, you pull it back out, get these facing you, and then you tighten it down. All right, so now you have it. And um, I already threw my shell, back, shell holder back on here. So what we're gonna do is, I extended this out pretty much as tall as I can go. Um, and we're just gonna get it up in there, start to seat it, and all right, so it's extremely long. So we got a lot of room to work with. Make sure it's zeroed. Okay, we're zeroed. And we want to be at 2.757. And we're at 2.948. Okay. So we got a lot of room to crank this bad boy down. Do the math. You can go about two. Okay. Let's see where this puts us. This should put us right in around two point eight. Two point eight four. Okay, so we want to go down another five hundredths. No, no, I take that back. Another choose almost another tenth so let me go down to the zero That's why you leave yourself five extras. Oh, yep. See, I did. I went a oh, just a, just a hair, two point seven four. So, this one will be one of our extras that we're gonna play with. Okay, so I'm gonna come up again. I'm gonna come up a full turn and. I'd like to do is I'd like to grab my these guys. I'll just sit it right in there. Okay, so I brought it up a full turn. Let's load up this one. Here we are, 60, 60 grains. We crank this back a little bit. Let's see where we're at. Should be right in the wheelhouse of 7.257, and we're at 7. Point, I'm sorry, 2.769, 2.769, and. Seven six eight seven six seven seven six six seven six five seven six five seven six four seven six three seven six two 
761, 760. Let's test this. We should be right at 2.760. Hmm. We're at 2.761. See that? All right. So 761, 760, 759. 758. All right. Test this again. We should be right at 758. And we're at 756. So pretty close. I was getting a little freaked out. I had a little bit, not enough space in here. So I put all the shit away, got a new one. I remembered that I like to use something big like this. I have some other ones that I use, but I like to run it. Um, it's a little more organized when you're out there in the field doing your load development. So uh, 60 grains and we're sitting right at, look at that, the 2755, 2756, Right in there, try not to squeeze it. 2755. So basically I need to come up another another notch. So we're gonna come up another notch and put this into the uh, little warm-up group. And here we are at 60, 60. Maybe this one, Don't squeeze it too hard. So we're at it seven six zero. Okay, we want to go a little bit lower than that. Seven six zero. Seven five nine. Seven five nine. Here we go. Boom. A little half turn down. Whatever this is is what we're gonna run with. So we'll do this. Seven five nine. Well, you know what? Let's see what happens. Let's go down a little bit more. It's fun to play with these. And we're only trying to get two thousandths, you know. So boom. <laughs> 757 and just in case you guys didn't know this competition seating die seats it directly like this measures it off the ogive so as it goes up it centers comes down centers everything concentricity should be perfect on it almost perfect nothing's really ever perfect there's 60 and let's do another one. Make sure it's in there. Now everything from here on out is going to be exactly the same. Perfectly consistent. Guy, I'm going to take off the auto repeat 
because I don't want another 60 year. Sixty point five. Sixty point five. I like doing it this way, charging, seating. That way I don't get distracted and end up putting another charge into the same case. And so I like doing it this way. And that way I can seat it while that's pouring. I'm not sitting here wasting my time. So 60.4. up to 60.6 um, I know I said that it doesn't matter but just for you know video's sake I'm just gonna go with all perfect 60.5 60.5 60.5 turn off the auto repeat Oops. Alright, so now we want sixty one. GoPro 5, GoPro here 5 takes some pretty good video, but I don't like how it re randomly shuts off. Cold weather affects it and it won't record. It's just not super reliable. So I went and bought a uh, 
Sony action cam this morning. Oh, forgot to turn off my auto repeat. I was talking. <laughs> See, this is the part that sucks. Sitting here, I have to wait for this thing to go. I like to be, you know, I like to be seating while I'm waiting for, you know, instead of waiting for this thing to crank out. Powder. I felt like an eternity. <laughs> repeat on this guy sixty one point six very yeah, very rarely happens and uh, then it overcharges just scoop a little bit back. Close enough. <clears throat> 61.5. It's always just right there on the cusp. I'm not going to freak out over one granule. Not going to happen. So I got a couple 60s back here that we're just playing around with, trying to uh, you know, get our get our case length set.
to 1.9. Turn off auto repeat. Get in there. All right, since I got three more pieces of brass, we're just going to bump it up to sixty two point five. Check it out. We'll see if there's any, you know, won't hurt. Let's see if it, there's a big six, uh, feet per second difference between 62 and 65. And, but I'm pretty sure we'll find the node somewhere within these ones. Cat over one granule, dang it. I forgot to hit auto repeat. Great. Mm -hmm. I'll put these down. I'll put them up there. finish up this video um, the next step uh, the next part of the series will go out and uh, actually shoot some targets with them see how they do and see what kind of data we can bring back to the reloading bench see what we might need to fix or change or you know check it out um, the rifle that we'll be using is a Remington 700 Sendero. All right, and we're back at the bench. Did anybody catch anything? What did I miss? I'm trying to put together this video, you know, and I normally don't do this stuff. So I got other distractions going on um, for you guys. Hi, Neil. What's up? What's up? Can you say hi? Yeah? Why don't you go away from me? Hmm? Every day. Yeah. You go, girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Out. Come on. Back. Alright. So anyways. Um. 
what we missed was zoom in on that All right two seven five seven that's the case based ogive what do we do we loaded these <laughs> case based ogive there's no jump these are right into the lands jammed in the lands um, it's people do it and it's fine you know I just don't want to do it first um, I don't want that to be my first you know load development strategy so um, what I'm gonna do is you know a lot of people will test these and go ten thousandths off thirty thousandths fifty thousandths and um, I've already done that with these VLDs in my Savage Long Range Hunter um, I've already done the jump method to see what works right and with these VLDs they they like no jump to very very little jump so we're gonna put these at ten thousandths off the lands and um, you know it's funny that I thought about this is when I was in the shower I thought I was done with the video and everything I'm in the shower and just click so like I said earlier nobody's perfect and um, you know if this is the mistake that you make reloading let that be your mistake because there's way worse things that could happen so always paying attention to your powder charges and stuff and I mean that's the most dangerous um, anyway so and I noticed when I did my video I wasn't you guys didn't get to see my measurements on here with this guy so we're gonna do this over again and um, so we have them loaded up right to uh, 2757 right there 757 so what we're gonna do is <clears throat> I haven't messed with my uh, <coughs> my uh, dealio yet my cedar die so we're gonna go 10 we're gonna basically go 10 clicks down um, so Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so now we should be at seven, four, seven. Uh, or seven four five. Good enough. Twelve thousandths off the lands, and it's fine because we're not going to be too crazy over critical of these things. <clears throat> we're going to just make sure that everything is exactly the same. So if I go and shoot these and I don't experience any kind of pressure signs, there'll be another video. There's lots of videos out there how to read pressure, stance, pressure signs, um, so flatten primers and stamp and bolt stamps on your brass. Um, if I don't experience any of that, then maybe I could increase the powder charge or um, Maybe get this a little bit tighter into the lands. Maybe um, you know five thousandths off or something. We'll see how the groups do. I'm sure this will be fine. I have a feeling I'll find a decent group within these that I'll be happy with, and uh, we can go take it out 
to the mile the mile shot out in the desert all right well there's that all right well I want to thank you for watching uh, if you watched it this far um, leave me some comments you know tell me I'm stupid because I forgot to load it like you know 10 thousands off the lands like I wanted to but um you know you're you're not perfect and you're gonna have accidents and things are gonna happen just don't let those accidents result in you know something getting hurt someone getting hurt something getting you know you getting injured you're you know you ruining your rifle you know something like that that that's exactly that's what you don't want so you know do your steps retrace your steps think about it and um and if you load your round into the chamber and it's tight and something's not right be careful think back you know what what could this be um don't try to jam it in too hard it should fit just nice um the only kind of you know heavy bolt lift that you should get would probably be after you're done firing um your already fire form brass and it might get the bolt lift to eject the cart you know eject the case might you know be tight so that that's gonna happen but going in when you're putting the round into the chamber and loading it and uh, slapping down that bolt just be careful if it's um, if it doesn't go right just back out okay because um, you don't want any accidents so well um the uh, rifle I was gonna say the rifle we'll be shooting is a uh, seven millimeter rem mag it's the Remington 700 Sendero, a 26 inch fluted barrel. I got a dual trigger on it. And, um, you know, other than the dual trigger, it's it's a factory rifle. And um, it's solid. It's got HS Precision stock on it. Um, you know, by no means competition rifle or anything like that. But when you get the right reloads, you know, it might be fun to take it out. Um, my competition rifle is being built right now. So that's going to be a 6.5 by 47 Lapua. And that one's gonna be a fun one. And um, I got some other stuff coming up. I got a Savage Target Action that I want to um, I want to have built. And um, I might do that in the same cartridge, 6.5747 Lapua. I might do that, but it'll be a single shot. And um, it, you know, I'll put a longer barrel on it and stuff. But um, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> but um we'll we'll take these out we'll get some muzzle velocities test the groups and um and maybe do a second round of uh load development maybe break it down into you know two tenths of a grain three tenths of a grain and um you know go from there and uh we should find something pretty nice and like i said i'm not going to you know i'm not worried about shooting you know holes through holes you know it'd be nice to have about a half minute moa that's that's a really good thing like that trying to get any better than that <clears throat> it's kind of a pain in the butt you know it can be done I just don't want to know if I want to waste that much time effort rounds you know all this stuff costs money and um, you know you if you don't got a ton of money you don't want to be that critical on yourself so it's uh, 11 day scrape W6 RIP we will catch you on a soda summit because uh, that's what we do Peace.